Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on The Walking Dead Season 10 Episode 17. As is the norm with all my videos, I won't be holding back on any spoilers so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Maggie Ree is officially back and yes, I know she returned during the previous episode but she didn't have any dialogue in that episode, she just kind of stood around staring at people like Luke Skywalker did at the end of The Force Awakens so... I know she returned in the previous episode, but this feels like the first time we've seen Maggie since, when was it, season 9 she left? So Maggie's back, and as expected, this episode is very Maggie-centric. We learn about what she's been up to since she left, we are introduced to some of her new friends, and we are also introduced to a new villainous group who want to kill her for some reason. The episode begins with Maggie coming face to face with Negan, and Negan kind of awkwardly tries to say hello to her and explain why he's not in prison, but Maggie just doesn't even entertain it. She just gives him this cold, evil look as it to say, I still hate you, I can't stand you, and just kind of storms on past him. And I really liked that. I loved the tension during this opening scene, and I just kind of wish we got more of that this episode because, for me, this opening was the best part of the entire episode. It never reached that you know, that high again in terms of quality. And that's not to say that I dislike the rest of the episode, it's just I'm craving for more Maggie and Negan stuff. But I know maybe I'll just have to be patient because these two will undoubtedly run into each other again as the season progresses. But yeah, I just really wanted to see more of them two together. And it's a shame that we only got a tease of that at the start of the episode. Whilst Maggie doesn't talk to Negan, one person she does talk to is Daryl. The two sit down together and have a conversation and catch up and... I think this might be the first time that these two have really sat down and spoken to each other since... Was it season 8 when Maggie was hiding at Hilltop and Daryl was blaming himself for killing Glenn? Or was that even season 7? Surely they must have spoke to each other since then. I don't know, let me know in the comments. But yeah, it seems like this is the first time in years that these two have actually just spoken to each other and sat down and... You know, caught up and had a chat of each other. So these two are mainstays on the show. Daryl's been on the show since the first season. Maggie since season two. But it just seems like these two never talk to each other. And it's nice that the writers just gave these two a bit of chill time, a bit of downtime to relax and chat with one another. So Maggie says during the conversation she has with Daryl that her people who she ended up finding after, it sounds like, did she leave Georgie or... I don't know, it sounds like she found another group after the Georgie's group and she found these people and then they were attacked by this new group called the Reapers and that now means that we've had the Claimers, the Whisperers, the Wolves, the Saviors and the Reapers all on this show. I mean, if you put those five names up on a poster on the side of the wall somewhere in the middle of the street, it would sound like, you know, the lineup to some kind of indie music festival. I mean... Just add the killers on there as well. I don't know, what is it with these names? But yeah, the Reapers. I don't know, something about this name irks me. And I know I'm being really pedantic because let's be honest, the Saviors and the Whisperers are pretty dumb as well. But the Reapers? I don't know, but there's just something about it that annoys me. Like it just, to me, it just makes me think of like this biker gang full of middle-aged men going through their midlife crisis you know you can just imagine one of them saying something like hey baby want to ride my harley tonight and hang out with the reapers like i don't know it just seems like a try hard name like it seems like something that a name for a group that someone thinks is cool like oh we're gonna call ourselves the reapers and yeah it's not i mean i know i'm being really dumb really pedantic here but i don't like this name and for some reason, it for me, it just feels more stupid than the Saviors and the Whisperers does. And I know, again, I know logically they're all dumb names, but I don't know. I just don't like this name for some reason. So, yeah, let me know if you feel the same, or maybe I'm the only one who has this problem with the Reapers' names. The Reapers' name? The Reaper, the name of the group, the Reapers. Speaking of the Reapers themselves, this episode of the protagonists are tormented by a Reaper sniper, and he's great. Until he isn't, when he blows himself up, but I'll get to that in a moment. This guy ends up trapping Daryl, Maggie, and some of her friends in the woods with his high caliber sniper rifle. And I think it's been since, what, season 9? The start of season 9 that our protagonists have used guns. So I kind of got this sense of them being really powerless as they were running through the woods with, you know, their primitive weapons in comparison. And there's this guy there just with a gun taking them all out. And I like that. So... The Reapers could prove to be a 
a decent threat if they all have access to better weapons than our protagonists do, which, like, you know, which this guy did during this episode. There was a really fantastic little moment in which Maggie and Daryl are both trapped behind trees and Daryl is kind of trying to stick his head out to talk to Maggie, but every time he does, the sniper just fires a shot and it just cuts Daryl off, so he can't even say what he wants to say just because the bullets come firing at the tree. And I really like that because it was almost as if this dude was just saying, look, I know who you are, and he was just sitting there waiting for Daryl to pop his head out so he could just get him and get the headshot and kill him. And um, yeah, I really like that. The sniper does actually manage to kill a couple of red shirts who were introduced this episode. It was two random women who were part of Maggie's group, the group that she found when she left Hilltop. And yeah, we see one of them already shot on the floor in the stomach and then the other one sees this and is like, oh no, I need to save you, and runs over. And of course the sniper is watching this the whole time and just shoots the other one and they both end up dead. And I like that Daryl was wise enough to recognize that this was a trap. You know, he saw it coming. Perhaps him and Mel played their fair share of first person shooters back in the day before the apocalypse because he was able to recognize this obvious sniper bait trap. All was going well for the sniper, that is until Maggie decided to flank him. So she found his gun, which was at his last known position, but it was just the gun. He wasn't actually there. He just put it there as a decoy. And then he appeared and revealed himself to Maggie. And that sounds really wrong. He didn't reveal himself to Maggie like that. It's not that kind of show. Anyway, moving on. Sadly, I think that this is where things get a bit dumb this episode, because up until that point... You know, him pinning them down behind the trees and firing off shots. So I found that quite nervy. You know, there was a lot of tension there, but it just didn't make any sense, his actions after that point. Because, I mean, firstly, why leave your gun and then try and take on the the person in hand-to-hand -hand combat or whatever? I mean, don't snipers normally, with their positions compromised, they just take their gun and move to another position? And then, you know, try and find them again from that position. So why not just do that? Why don't you just relocate? I don't really understand why he felt the need to leave his gun and try and use it as a trap. I don't really know. And secondly, I don't really understand why the guy who is dressed in like a full ghillie camouflage suit feels the need to then like just pop out of nowhere and start moving and be like, hey, look, it's me. I mean, if you've gone to all that effort to camouflage yourself, why not just stay camouflaged and take the person out? Why did he then just like pop up in front of Maggie and, and try to like slowly go towards her? I don't know, I just thought that was a bit dumb. The only reason I can think of to justify the way this dude acted is that perhaps he was just too cocky. You know, maybe he knew that the people he was hunting didn't have guns and he did have body armor on and he had traps in the area where he and Maggie was so... Maybe he just thought that he could take down Maggie easily and he didn't need to hide anymore, I don't know. But yeah, it's a bit of a shame really because he went from smart ass to dumb ass in the space of about two seconds. And then the worst moment of the entire episode, in my opinion, happens when he is captured and surrounded by our protagonist. So Maggie is standing in front of him and this dude then reaches into his inside jacket pocket. And bear in mind, Maggie's there with a bow aimed at him. And why would you let a hostile enemy reach into their pocket, just kill the dude? But she lets him reach into his pocket. And then he pulls out a pin. And it's a pin from a grenade. And he says something about Pope has marked you. And I guess Pope is his boss or something. And then he blows himself up. And Maggie then screams, get down. And everyone survives and no one is injured despite the fact that they were five feet or less away from a grenade explosion. I have seen a few comments on the Walking Dead Reddit page from people saying that because he was wearing body armor it caught the explosion and that's why no one was hurt and I mean maybe they're right I don't know anything about the grenade so maybe I'm being negative for no reason here but Common sense is telling me that if you're standing next to a person who's pulled a grenade, you're going to get hurt. Or if you don't get majorly hurt, you're at least going to be suffering hearing loss or you're going to be dazed and confused. But Maggie just screams, get down and everyone's fine. And just carries on like normal. When... But the dude manages to completely blow himself up and no one else even gets a scratch on them. So yeah, that was, uh, that was something. I'll admit I do like the fact that the Reapers will kill themselves to not give any information out and it just shows their devotion to their leader and 
you know, the fact that they are, well, I'm, what I'm guessing is they're almost like a cult based on this dude we saw during this episode. But I just hope it doesn't mean that they're like the wolves because they were cult-like and uh, they were just terrible antagonists in my opinion. Oh, excuse me, my phone is going off. So yeah, I just hope that these guys have more motivation and just more to them than the wolves did. I hope they're just not another cult of crazy people who just want to kill people for because that's what they wanted to do. Yeah, I just I hope they're better than the wolves. Now this next point that I'm going to mention feels a bit weird for me to say this considering that I have often complained about The Walking Dead being too slow in the past and often complained about its pacing but was it just me or did anyone think this was quite quick to be introducing new antagonists in The Walking Dead? I mean the Whisperers were only defeated during the last episode. I kind of would have rather just had the show taken a bit more time out and reflected on that and maybe just had an episode in which people were at Alexandria and they were dealing with small issues and interpersonal issues and you know had to deal with some walkers i just kind of wasn't ready for a new group to appear i kind of wasn't ready for the show to just go oh here are the reapers uh, they killed maggie's people and they want to kill everyone here they are enjoy i just kind of wanted things to be a bit slower and again i can't believe i'm complaining about the walking dead going too fast but the pacing just felt a bit off to me this episode However, of course, I do understand that with COVID restrictions, it wasn't possible to shoot an episode with loads of people. So perhaps it wouldn't have been possible to have an episode located in Alexandria where there was, you know, 10 or so main characters and all the extras around and all that kind of stuff. So perhaps that's why Angela Kang and, you know, the rest of the writers have decided to make these six episodes on the road and with a couple of people in each bottle episodes and introduce this new villain and go down this kind of action heavy kind of fast paced route so yeah i get that maybe it was just maybe it would have been different if not for covid after the stupid sniper blows himself up maggie finds herschel jr who had previously gone missing and i just have to say this kid is freaking adorable i mean i think he's wearing glenn's hat and he's also got glenn's cheeky smile which reminds me of the way that glenn looked at maggie back in season two and yeah, I mean, brilliant job casting this kid because he looks like a perfect fit for the role. He just looks like a little cheeky kid, reminds me so much of Glenn. And yeah, I love this kid already. Maggie and Herschel Jr. head to Alexandria and as they are going through the gates, Negan spots them. And in that moment, Negan looks really remorseful and sad. And we know that Negan likes kids and I guess that seeing Herschel in the flesh kind of hit home what he did to his father. And like I said in my 10C reaction video, I think the Here's Negan episode is going to take place because Negan's going to feel guilty about his past actions. And I think in the trailer when we see Negan in his leather jacket and him saying, little pig, little pig, let me in. I think that's Negan seeing that himself and him kind of trying to deal with his path. So I think Negan and Maggie will both have a big role to play in the rest of the season, but their paths will cross over once again. And I'm looking forward to that. There's just a few more things I want to talk about before I wrap this video up. So firstly, Kelly, although she did the classic Walking Dead trope of wandering out on her own like a buffoon, I actually quite liked her this episode. I thought she put in a really good performance. I mean, I haven't really given her character much thought since she's been on the show because for me, her sister has always overshadowed her. I much prefer Connie to Kelly, but Kelly is growing on me and I liked what I saw from her this episode. Elijah, the mysterious dual blade wielding masked figure who was introduced in episode 16, is unmasked this episode and we find out that Under the Mask is a baby-faced mute guy, which was uh, unexpected to say the least. And I'm just not sure what's really going on with his character because, I mean, in episode 16, he kind of turned up and he was slashing whisperers and twirling his knives or whatever his blades are around like some kind of bloody ninja. Yet in this episode, Kelly has to ask him to take his mask off and comfort him because he's scared. And I just kind of think, really? What what has happened between the two episodes for you to go from one extreme to the other? Of the one extreme being this killing machine to now being scared and not being able to do anything. So I don't know. I mean, it just felt like a weird transition between the two characters. I'm not going to judge his character too harshly or, you know, make any judgments now because he's He's only been on the show for two episodes and we, we still don't know much about his character. But yeah, it just felt weird to see him going from this charismatic dude who was twirling his blades to now someone who's 
scared so yeah i don't know overall this episode did a good job of entertaining me i was engaged from start to finish i thought there were some really good scenes and you know a lot of tension and i liked the sniper dude until he decided to act like a moron and reveal his position and then blow himself up but yeah it entertained me but i don't know it just kind of felt like something was missing the pacing just felt a bit off to me it kind of felt like we've just rushed into this new story arc and I hope, like I said, I hope the Reapers aren't just a, a filler kind of um, villain like the Wolves were until, you know, which will just kind of be on the show until we get to the next plot point, which will be the Commonwealth. So I hope that they do a better job with the Reapers than they have done kind of previous uh, for TV original villains. But we'll see how it goes. So it was an OK episode. I didn't hate it, but there was a lot that I just thought was a bit silly. But, you know, it's nice to have The Walking Dead back. So hopefully next week will be an improvement. So let me know your thoughts below. Did you like this episode? Did you hate it? Did you kind of agree with me and just think that it was okay, that it was average? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. So that's the end of this video. I'm going to go now. But it kind of feels like I'm missing something. Like there was something I was supposed to mention, something important or someone I was supposed to mention. But, oh, well, I'm sure it's nothing. So, yeah, anyway... Bye-bye. Josh, the thing you forgot was me. I'm still in this cupboard. I've been stuck in here since Christmas. Please help me, buddy, old pal. I'm having to eat my own beard. I'm so hungry. Someone help Scotty G.